Welcome back to Cap Report. After hours, we kind of like kind of kick back and you know smoke cigarettes and talk, talk politics along. We have Jimmy Coplick with us, the great concert promoter, who in an, art, in an article in the Hartford Current calls himself a laid back. He doesn't call himself. He was called the laid back purveyor of cool. Jimmy, welcome to After Hours. It was 1968. The article said where uh, you were into politics. Very uh, much, very much so. Uh, the, the assassination of Robert, uh, Robert, Robert Kennedy kind of turned your career towards music and away from politics. If that had not happened, a lot of things would have been different in America, probably. And you may be serving out your third term as a senator from, from Connecticut. You probably have some strong feelings about what's going on in politics right now. Why don't you give us a couple beats on that? Well, I, I did. I was the head of students for Kennedy for the state of Ohio, um, and I wanted to be a senator or a governor. Uh, so I was going to law school afterwards, and Robert Kennedy got assassinated, bummed me out decided to go from politics to sports. I love sports. I mean, politics to music. I love music. I love sports, too. And the music part really, really enticed me. And I love the political bands, of course, Zills and Nashes and bands like that. Right now, I personally feel that Donald Trump is an embarrassment to us. I, I, whether I voted for him or not is not important. I think people have to take stock right now and realize that he's uh, appealing to the fringe, a bad fringe, and that's a concern. I'm not even talking about policies or anything like that. I have my own thoughts on that. Some things I agree with him and some things I don't agree with him. Are, are bands still doing protest rock and roll anymore? Are no. they doing now? And why, why do you figure that, Jimmy? Is it too? I mean, there's, millennials. No, there's, there's, no, there's no edginess to it anymore. They're not doing, no. they're not doing anything. What and about they, you too? Well, they're they're banned, yeah, but they're Green old. Is. They're yeah. old. Yeah. They're in their 50s. What about Bruce Springsteen? Spends half his time ripping the crap out of uh, Republicans because I, I go to them all the time and I wait for that moment. I guess and they're they're Republican. Well, and I, yeah. 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 I got that picture. Well, but I think you were more talking about the younger bands today. Well, sure. Well, sure. Yeah. Because well, I mean, you have Roger Waters out there on his tour um, with graphic images of, of Trump. You know, in his song, yes. what's it called, Pig or something. And and so so the older bands are still doing the protest. The younger bands, I don't think they, they don't have they don't have it, right. Well, cheesy is always they talking are. about well, it. And I mean, well, they like were very, most people, they, on that generation, it's not as important to them. They're not as partisan. No, they're not. I mean, that's just the way it is. I, mean, you know I don't artists. think that's true. I, I think that maybe you're just not listening to that type of music, but I mean, it's yeah. out there a lot about what this country's going it's, for, where people stand. Maybe it's, it's and subtle. a lot of them are getting politically active, too. And when, when you th uh, whatever your per persuasion, uh, it's the same thing with country and western. When they, you know, either side, I mean, when it's just lecturing and pedantic, it's boring. Is the music good? You know, is the lyrics somewhat inventive? And if it has a political tone to it, I that's great. I think is always good, so. Well, let's, uh, let's, I'm with him. Let, let's segue to, to, to Bridgeport. Jimmy is, is going to be the concert promoter for a new amphitheater in Bridgeport. Congratulations on that. Thank you very How much. How much can music and amphitheaters and concerts uh, bring bring life back into the city? You know, you and I worked together on the Meadows. I'm still always going to call it the Meadows Music Theater in Hartford, and that was uh, still still is quite 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 successful. I always call you the father of the Meadows. Thank you. So how how <laughs> can how <laughs> can, how can concerts and the concert business help really vitalize our inner city? And what do you hope for Bridgeport? Well, you know, if you have a, a couple hundred thousand people come to a concert that starts at eight o'clock. Many times they're looking to do something between 6 and 8 or from 11 to 1. And so what it does is it drives a lot of economic uh, development, a lot of economic impact. We estimate over $50 million from a season uh, down in Bridgeport. Uh, Bridgeport is trying to thrive like other cities. Uh, the mayor is trying to put a lot into it. He's revamping the theaters downtown. Uh, and uh, the idea of changing a baseball park into a an amphitheater that's a small boutique amphitheater which we don't have in Connecticut there's nothing like this in Connecticut and to have it sitting in Bridgeport by itself the only one in Connecticut is a real rare treat I think when when you took the, the, the gamble on the Meadows in the North Meadows of Hartford basically nothing was there and now we have a beautiful ballpark there and that whole area is kind of a vibrant part of, of Hartford yeah look at that a, a Republican governor did that <laughs> can I ask a question do you do you Thank what you. do you think? Thank you. Appreciate it. Sure. It was an accident. What do you yes. think of the competition <laughs> between the different venues? And yes, how do you see that playing out in Connecticut? Well, I know there's a lot going on with the venue, in, the indoor venue in Bridgeport, the Webster Bank Arena, and we do business there. And my, my simple comment, they're afraid we're going to compete against them. My simple comment is they only have a few shows a year now. They don't have shows during the summer. We're only open during the summer. This will help put Bridgeport on the map. Who would have ever thought that Uncasville, Connecticut, would be on the map of everybody who's touring? 
I mean, it's unbelievable. I never heard of Uncasville 20 years ago. And now everybody who tours is playing Uncasville. Well, they got 3,000 slot machines. Can I put in, in, yes, can I put in a request? And and about and everything else. Can I put in a request? My wife is a big fish fan. Can you get fish oh, there? Oh, is she? Yes. Yeah. Well, well, no, fish, no, fish plays the meadows. And, <laughs> how, and how do you think this ties in? One of the big problems Connecticut has, you know, companies are leaving because young people don't want to live in Connecticut. How do you think these types of venues play into wanting young people really to be part of Connecticut and part of these communities? Well, I think the mayor up in Hartford realizes how important uh, uh, it is uh, with the young people. That's because uh, he's young. <laughs> he is young, I know. You're Not right. that he young. young. He's young and he needs revenue. <laughs> <laughs> we all need revenue. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and, and what it does is it definitely is a magnet for young people. And uh, when you're trying to convince a company, it's hard to get people to work for me in Wallingford, Connecticut. What's Wallingford got? But I bring them to New Haven, and New Haven's very vibrant. And I always, it's got a great music scene, it's got a great theater scene, it's got a great restaurant scene. If we could also bring them to Bridgeport, that would, oh, that would help even more. Well, let's leave it there, the great Jimmy Koplick. Thanks for joining us. Before after hours. After hours. I haven't yeah. been after. I'm so old. Yeah, I know. I'm, you're, I'm you're exhausted. Home. Home right you told me it was after hours. <laughs>